Oh, praise our great and gracious Lord, and call upon his name. To strings of joy, tune every chord, his mighty hearts proclaim. Tell how he led his chosen race to Canaan's promised land. Tell how he is come unchanged shall ever stand. He gave the shadowing cloud by day, the morning fire by night, to guide his Israel on the way he made the darkness light. And have not we a choice Christ Jesus, you come in word and sacrament, 
to strengthen us and make us holy. Christe, Christe, Eleison. Christe, Christe, Eleison. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen, Amen, Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. For you are Lord of the Holy One, you are Lord of the Lord, you are Lord of the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in our lives the fruits of your redemption who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how the Lord your God led you for forty years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you and know your innermost heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you, he made you feel hungry, he made you, he fed you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to make you understand that man does not live on bread alone, but that man lives on everything that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not then forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who guided you through this vast and dreadful wilderness, a land of fiery serpents, scorpions, thirst, who in this waterless place brought you water from the hardest rock, who in this wilderness fed you with manna that your fathers had not known. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the song. O oh, praise the Lord Jerusalem. O oh, praise the Lord Jerusalem. O oh, praise the Lord Jerusalem. 
Zion praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed the children within you. Oh, praise the Lord Jerusalem. He established peace on your borders. He feeds you with finest wheat. He sends out his word to the earth and swiftly runs his command. Oh, praise the Lord Jerusalem. He makes his word known to Jacob, to Israel his laws and decrees. He has not dealt thus with other nations. He has not taught them his decrees. Oh, praise the Lord Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. And the bread that we break is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that though there are many of us, we form a single body because we all have a share in this one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the living bread, come eat and live forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus said to the Jews, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? they said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate, they are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. During this time of lockdown, there's been lots of repeats on the television. On Sunday evenings, the Antiques Roadshow has also been showing repeats. And one of the programmes, I can't remember which Sunday it was, on one of the programmes, a lady brought a pair of earrings for valuation. She paid £2.99 for them at a charity shop. And the valuer waxed lyrical about them. He explained, that they were worth a substantially lot more than she paid for them. He explained that they were certainly not costume jewellery as she had first thought. The earrings were made up of diamonds set in platinum and each had a natural pearl dangling below, probably dating them because of the natural pearl to the early 1920s. When asked why she liked them, the owner said, because they were shiny. The Eucharist is the jewel which Jesus has set in the heart of the church. And the church is designed in such a way that the Eucharist becomes 
in the words of the teachings of the Second Vatican Council, the Eucharist becomes the source and summit of Christian life. In other words, it shines, it attracts, even when we haven't grasped its full worth, its full value for our lives. But the jewel of the Eucharist adorned in the setting of the church is not something just to be looked at, like diamonds in an earring. Jewelry is meant to be worn and to adorn the person wearing it. So too the Eucharist. It has to become part of us. It has to adorn us. It has to mark us out of the people of God journeying to the promised land of heaven. The Eucharist, the Mass, is the continual presence among us of the new and everlasting covenant which Jesus sealed by his blood on Calvary. The Eucharist, the Mass, is the perpetual reminder of the everlasting union between God and his people. The Eucharist, the Mass, is the foretaste of the banquet of eternal life to which we've all been invited. When this pandemic eventually passes, my great hope and prayer is that each of us, priests and people alike, will have come to a greater appreciation and love for this wonderful gift that Jesus left us in the Eucharist. I think it's only when we are deprived of something we love do we come to desire and love it all the more. St. Thomas Aquinas tells us, what could be more precious, what could be more wonderful than this sacrament? No sacrament contributes more to our salvation than this, for it purges away sins, increases our virtues, and nourishes our minds with an abundance of all the spiritual gifts. If this is what the Eucharist is for us, then through us, this is what it has to be for the world. Because in the Eucharist, the Holy Spirit is not just sent down upon gifts of bread and wine, like the juif ball, as we say in the Eucharistic prayer, but the Holy Spirit is also poured over the followers of Jesus, so that the Eucharistic prayer tells us they are filled with the Holy Spirit, that we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. In other words, the Spirit transforms not just bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ, but the people of God are also transformed by the Holy Spirit, so we too become the body of Christ. We are nourished by the body and blood of Christ at Mass because we are the people of God, we are the body of Christ. And the nourishment that we receive has to become part of us so that our lives can nourish others in the world. We, the body of Christ, come to Mass to be nourished by the body of Christ in word and sacrament so that we might better become the body of Christ in and for our world. In that way, even those who do not know Christ, even those who have never been to Mass, or probably will never come, they can be nourished by the Lord through us. When we truly live our Christian life, showing kindness, charity, love and respect to everyone, then our witness nourishes others. It strengthens and encourages them to be more loving and kind themselves. You know, if you throw a stone into a pond, you know yourself, you throw a stone into the pond and the water ripples outward from the centre of the splash and it ripples right over the pond and it can travel for some distance. So too with the Eucharist. If we truly digest the food of the Lord's body and blood, then that food will ripple out like water on a pond and feed on us. St. Teresa of Avila put it like this, Christ has no body on earth but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which Christ's compassion is to look out upon the earth. Yours are the feet by which he is to go about doing good. And yours are the hands by which he is to bless us now. We are the body of Christ on earth.
we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, Christ has given us the Eucharist for strength and nourishment as we journey through life. Let us turn to God in thanksgiving for such a wondrous gift. And the response to each prayer is, and strengthen us with the bread of life and strengthen us with the bread of life. Let us pray for all those deprived of the Eucharist because of this pandemic. May they experience in their hearts and lives the comfort and consolation of the Holy Spirit. And may this time of spiritual communion renew their love for the Eucharist. Lord, hear our prayer and strengthen us with the bread of life. Let us pray for Pope Francis and Malcolm, our Archbishop, May they know the love of God in their own lives and always show it to those God has placed in their care. Lord, hear our prayer and strengthen us with the bread of life. Let us pray for all those waiting to receive sacraments at this time, especially the children waiting for their first Holy Communion. May they always appreciate the gift of the body and blood of Jesus and may their love for the Eucharist deepen more each day in this time of waiting. Lord, hear our prayer and strengthen us with the bread of life. Let us pray for peace in our world, remembering at this time Syria, the Lebanon and Afghanistan and all other parts of the world afflicted by war and turmoil. May those who advocate violence, hate and inhumanity have a change of heart and come to know the one true God who brings forth through Jesus peace, mercy, and love. Lord, hear our prayer and strengthen us with the bread of life. Let us pray for all those who have finished their schooling this year. May the Holy Spirit be alive in them and grant them wisdom as they make their life's choices. And may this time of lockdown not hamper their future in any way. Lord, hear our prayer and strengthen us with the bread of life. Let us pray for all the sick. May they know healing and comfort. Let us pray too for our own deceased relatives, benefactors and friends, and for all those whose anniversaries occur about this time. We ask Mary, Mother of the Church, to pray with us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, all-powerful and true, answer our prayers and nourish us with the heavenly gifts, so that we may know how to praise and thank you. We ask this through Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Right 
Almighty gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. That they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death for Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Saint Joseph, our husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with our own patron saints and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May in this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Malcolm, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that 
by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my own peace I give you, but not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the living Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us now pray for peace in our troubled world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. I offer my communion for you on this wonderful feast of the solemnity of Corpus Christi. And I ask that you offer your communion for yourselves, yes, but for ourselves as the church, that soon we might be united again and celebrate the Eucharist together. O bread of heaven, be beneath this veil, thou dost my very God conceal. By Jesus, dearest treasure pair, I love thee and adore thee near. Each loving soul by thee is fed. With thine own self in form of bread. O food of life, thou who dost give the pledge of immortality. I live, no tears, not I, but live. God gives me life, God lives in. Love. 
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And all the government of the Knights of the Churches will be opened on, from Monday the 15th of the month. But um, it is for us a cautious reopening of the churches, and no church can open here in the Archdiocese without the permission of the Archbishop. And at uh, first, I think, um, the guidelines that are coming out showing us that perhaps only two or three churches in each pastoral area will open first and, and then others might be opened afterwards but that's after some strict guidelines have been followed um, because of the pandemic so it's a cautious reopening so don't come to the church on Monday the 15th thinking it'll just be open uh, as usual it won't be unless we get permission from the Archbishop so keep a, a, a looking at the website and I'll update you as best I can on all the information that will come from the Archbishop um, from the 15th onwards. Um, I'd like to just mention the family of Josephine Wiggett, whose mass it is today, who are following this on um, social media. Um, and we're praying for you in this time of your mum's death and the, the death of Josephine. We, we ask um, eternal rest. And again, we remember the children who should have been having the Thanksgiving Mass for First Holy Communion today. They've not yet received their First Holy Communion. So we pray for them, especially in this time of waiting. A wonderful feast. We've been deprived of the Eucharist, yes, in this pandemic. But such deprivation might bring us to a greater love and a greater appreciation of the gift that uh, we, have, we received through Christ in this Eucharist. Also, just a word of thanks to those of you who've been supporting the parish financially through the different methods uh, that are on the website for being able to put into the account. It's very much appreciated in this time of waiting before we get back to a certain amount of normality. As you can see, I'm waiting for the barbers to open, as I'm sure most of you are. But also, I'm waiting for the dentist to open as well, because there's work to be done. So, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be happy when things start opening. May the Lord bless you and watch over you, especially during this time. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Worship, glory, praise, and honor to our God, high throne above. We with many gentle. by the Spirit. May we see the Saviour's face, hear his word and heed his calling, know his will and grow in grace. Saviour, give the living Spirit to the preaching of the word, so that saved and taught and child we may teach what we have heard. Son of man, thy broken body, Lamb of God, thy dying love, we remember at thy table till we feast with thee above. Sanctify us by thy Spirit, Jesus, Lord, our corner, as each a holy temple built for God and God alone. Praise and honor to the Father, praise and worship to the Son, praise and worship to the Spirit, praise